Among modern man's many unattractive traits, besides rudely texting in mid-conversation and elevating ignorance to a constitutional right, perhaps our least attractive is our profound impatience. Not the perfectly rational impatience that comes with suffering fools and teenagers. We're impatient in the sense that we hate to wait. Waiting in modern times is an insult, an affront to our supreme individuality, a violation of our entitlement to pizza in 30 minutes or it's free. Waiting, after all, isn't your fault, it's society's fault. Why do people wait? Because of other people. Other people are serving someone else instead of you, or they're doing something far less important than obliging you, or worse, they're obstinately coming between you and the fulfillment of your needs, namely your need for an iced cappuccino and a 40 box of Timbits. You, yes, you at the eight items or less checkout fiddling with your change purse and requesting lottery tickets and cigarettes. You're interfering with my mental well-being and my desire to get home in time to watch Knitting with the Stars. Waiting is society's way of saying that someone else is more important than you, which just isn't the case. The only person more important than you is me. And we don't just get annoyed when we wait. We get angry. We fume. We stew. We conjure up revenge fantasies. Why is this laptop making me wait five seconds before conducting this hugely complex and borderline miraculous electrotechnological computation? My Facebook friends are waiting. Stupid computer. Arrgh. This impatience is not limited to the physical world of bank lines and traffic jams. We're impatient with politics as well. Two years into Barack Obama's term as president, the electorate has demanded their change now. It's completely unacceptable that the president hasn't single-handedly overhauled the overwhelmingly complicated global economic structure without, of course, obliging us to make any significant sacrifices. Where's my change, huh? How come I still can't afford that vacation in Aruba? That's it. I'm voting for the witch. Society tries to placate this impatience with various mind tricks. Nothing, for instance, aggravates the impatience lobe more than waiting at highway construction. Just waiting and waiting for the flagman to let you go. Time stops. The car heats up. The radio plays nothing but hollow notes. It's a pressure cooker. If truth be told, the flagman should fear for his life. Now they have traffic lights that count down the seconds to green. We still hate waiting those 360 seconds. That's enough time for two hollow note songs. But at least there's an end in sight and no potential maiming of the flagman. The doctor's waiting room has a huge potential for delay rage. That's why after making you wait endlessly and they call your name, you think, ah, at last. And then you enter the doctor's office where you endlessly wait some more. This impatience is a modern trend. People used to not mind waiting. Waiting used to be a lifestyle. Two-thirds of any given day was spent just sitting and waiting. But as technology has made everything faster, it's gotten worse. If Waiting for Godot were written today, it would be, To heck with Godot, I'm out of here. Bob Marley's I Don't Want to Wait in Vain would be, I Don't Want to Wait, period. So where is this all headed? What will happen when technology makes things faster still? What happens when we start teleporting and having one-week pregnancies? Will our sense of entitlement for instant gratification finally eliminate our capacity for patience? All I can say is, just you wait.